Hello everyone, it's CJ. I thought today we can make a video kind of giving you an introduction to my photography book collection or monograph as they are called. Maybe give a little precursor into why I collect these books, why I have so many, my buying habits for them, and just a brief overview of my collection thus far and maybe some of my favorites. This is something that I haven't seen on a lot of other channels. If you watch any YouTubers who specifically love art books and love photography in particular, please give me those recommendations because I am always curious into what other people are collecting and doing. But I wanted to show off my own a little bit. In additional context, I went to art school. I majored in photography. I love fine art photography. I think it's obviously my favorite medium of art making. I've loved photography since I was a teenager. I started out in my small town in Arizona taking pictures of live music in my friends' bands just kind of as a way to connect to my friend group and also the music scene at the time, probably when I was like 14, 15, 16. And then it evolved into exploring larger narratives and using photography as a tool to question and investigate things. That's an at a glance view of why I like photography in general and why I collect these books. I view collecting photo books and monographs as an investment and a hobby, essentially. It's something that I envision being a lifelong habit and book buying practice and something that is gonna be one of my interests forever. It's definitely a financial investment. I mean, I think typically photo books range from like 40 to $100 um, depending on edition size and who the publisher is and length of the book and quality and printing process, etc. They can go for much more than that if they're a smaller edition or from a really acclaimed photographer, etc. Um, but most of mine have fallen in that $40 to $100 range, so they're not something I'm buying all the time. I like I like going to a fine art bookstore and just kind of perusing whenever I travel. It's something that I try to make a priority to seek out local bookstores that specialize in carrying monographs. So yeah, I mean, there are photographers whose careers I follow and I know when they're publishing books, so I make an effort to, to buy them. And then there's some that I discover while book shopping, which I think is half the fun. In general, I would say books are the most democratic expression and way to collect a body of photographic work. I think a lot of photographers are trying to work within narratives and explore a story to some extent. That's not the intent of every photographer, obviously, but having something collated into a book format really supports a lot of the theses that they're trying to explore. It's obviously cheaper than buying a thousand, you know, a print, an original print, which could be thousands and thousands of dollars. But that's a whole nother story. With that in mind, let's get into actually looking at the books now. I have my collection mostly on this bookshelf, which is in our kind of like open living room, dining room. I have our dining room table pushed far away just so I can get uh, far enough back and show you this from afar. Yes, the shelf is very cool and weird. I kind of refer to it as a, a porthole. Our house was built in the 20s, but redone in the 70s. And this is one of the design features we kept when we started renovating and restoring our house um, from the 70s, just because we thought it's actually like really cool woodworking and was done with a lot of intention and I think is pretty unique. So we've kept it great. Let's do an at a glance tour, shall we? Okay, so this is the bookshelf from afar. Usually our dining room table is pushed much closer to this, so you, this is kind of a weird angle. You wouldn't usually see this without furniture in front of it. All right, let's get closer. Okay, we're starting on the first shelf with this stack here. These are not arranged in any meaningful way. I think that would be a fun exercise for me to do one day, but it's kind of haphazard and mostly like what fits where. These are obviously, some of them are very tall books, so some can only be stacked horizontally, etc. I would say in my top five of most influential photographers is definitely William Eggleston. Huge formative impact into my own work. This is actually a really gorgeous giant book all about circus and carnival photography, which I've talked a little bit about before, is my family's business. Um, 
I got this at the Circus Museum in Sarasota, Florida that I visited with my family one time and that was really cool. And then I have a David Hockney. This is Kiki's Monet book. Larry Sultan, who I love. Um, Mossless, which is an anthology of more contemporary photographers. I don't know if they're in print anymore, um, but they did kind of like quarterly themed collection of uh, photographies based on a theme. This one is the United States. So that's that. Getting into this next little cross section, I have the illustrated version of Just Kids, which is really, really cool. Um, you get to see more of the images of Patty and Robert when they were young, which is really interesting. Some of these are Kiki's books, Off the Grid, which is uh, more of a architecture book, woodworking, he's a carpenter, so you know what it is. Pictures of JFK, I love the Kennedys. It's cultural icons, so this is mine. <laughs> um, my high school yearbook, definitely, you know, fine art right there. And then this is my book. I published a photo book called Midway in 2016, I believe. It's a collection of photographs and a body of work I made when I was traveling on my family's carnival um, during my thesis year of college. So I can share that more one day. Obviously very vulnerable. It's probably the thing I am most proud of in this world. <laughs> and also if you've noticed my tattoo on my wrist, that's that's what that is. It's called a an R key in the carnival business. It's a little hitch pin that keeps all the rides together. And then I just have more kind of like magazines. This is a popular coffee table book. And then these are some random books of Kiki's that I'm not sure what these are. Um, I got this as a Christmas gift. That wraps up this little cross section. All right, going into here, we have a Nan Golden book, another top five most influential photographers to me. Captures family and intimacy in ways that no one else does. A Stephen Shore book, love him. Another Stephen Shore book. We have some smaller contemporary photographers here. Rita Puig Saracosta, Hunter Barnes. The Photographer's Playbook, which is a book put out by Aperture. It's like kind of an interview book. It's kind of fun. Friedlander, Martin Parr. We have some photography theory, which I read in college. Mike Slack, I love him. He's a contemporary photographer. Alex Soth, an eight by 10 legend, large format. Nan Golden, The Ballad of Sexual Dependency, kind of an important institutional book. Frank Hallam Day, this is a lesser known contemporary photographer. What is this? Oh, this is a, a publication put out by Pomegranate Press, who is a small imprint. Last section up here, we have Polychromatic. I love this book, it's gorgeous, gorgeous work. Uh, Nothing in Vain, I got that at Ampersand, a smaller book. These are just some issues of Aperture when I still had a, a subscription. My Dakota is a gorgeous, gorgeous book. I really love that. Patty Smith book, Kiki Smith, another Alex Soth, and another, another Eggleston. So I've got a good, a good snapchat here. A lot of, a lot of white people and a lot of old white men, but that is <laughs> the majority of art history, isn't it? All right, down here, this shelf definitely gets a little bit more random. It's more cookbooks and definitely less curated. Uh, vegan cookbooks up here. In the Company of Women, another coffee table book. Um, the last five copies of my monograph, Midway. And these are all photo books. I physically print out, you know, like little four by six, 35 millimeter prints of all of the photos that I want to remember every year and put them into a physical photo album because I'm a grandma. We got an Eggleston. We got that cool Elliot Smith overview. Another Mossless edition. Gregory Halpern. I love his work. A Reoccurring Dream by Cole Brown. A lot of these are Mac editions. If you see that, that's a Mac book, a Mac imprint. They usually work with really large, well-known photographers. Photography is Magic by Charlotte Cotton. Another book I read in college, Ed Ruscha. I got this as a gift. 
Thomas Demand, I love his work. Liam Eggleston's Guide, classic. This is <laughs> a DIY housework book of Kiki's. I think this is Robert Frank's The Americans, but I, for some reason, have a Japanese edition. How to Read Contemporary Art, a book I read in college. Hesitating Beauty, a really beautiful look, um, really beautiful body of work about this photographer's mother's struggle with dementia. And then let's see, kind of, these are two almost graphic novels, I think. This cursed coffee table book that I think a lot of people have. <laughs> um, this cool bibliophile book, which is like illustrated tours of bookshops across the world. This is a cute book. If you're watching this channel, you will probably like it. Seabird, gorgeous body of work. And then the rest of these are just um, cookbooks. All vegan cookbooks, which I do not use anymore and can be given away. I thought I would wrap up this video and just talk through three photo books I kind of pulled at random. Just give you a closer look at them so you're not just seeing the spines of these and can see the work. This is just, I don't know, I just pulled these three at random. Not really random, two of them are pretty heavy hitters, but let's get through it. Okay, so first up is The Ballad of Sexual Dependency. Uh, by Nan Golden. Nan Golden was a photographer is a photographer who is most well known for this body of work. She documented the AIDS crisis in the 80s in New York City um, and it directly affected her close friends, her lovers, and she was kind of instrumental in laying the foundation for what is known in photography as the snapshot approach. So she's kind of getting a direct intimacy with her subjects and the formality and formalism of maybe more traditional photography techniques and the emphasis on lighting and composition and kind of these like structural hierarchies of what we define a good image. She broke all of that down and was really influ influential in exploring personal and the raw. Let's look through a couple pages together. This is the book, it's put out by Aperture. It has a film dust cover on it, which is why it's reflective. This is Nan Golden herself, the photographer. She included herself in her work a lot and there's a lot of self-portraiture involved. I don't think I'm gonna be doing exhaustive walkthroughs. Um, these books actually contain a lot of potentially triggering images of domestic abuse, drug use, dying, death, and they have a lot of nudity in them. So I am forewarning you right now, I don't even know if that's allowed to be on YouTube, but I'm going to walk through a couple pages, call out anything that I think is important. So I think this image in particular, I know this is, I've read a lot about Nan Golden and her subjects. I know this is her friend Cookie, who was her best friend. This is on her wedding day. She eventually ended up passing away from AIDS. But this sticks out to me because conventionally, I don't think this would have been viewed as art, right? Like this is just an image taken on someone's wedding day. There's nothing really striking or profound about the compositions or what the subjects are doing. But in the place of this narrative, like this is halfway through the book, that she's framing about what her life was like at this time and the journey that these two subjects go on, it's elevated. Always interesting to see what people give space to as they're formatting their books. She wanted this one to be alone, obviously. Lots of portraiture of her friend group. We seem to be in a children's section. <laughs> her friends, snapshot of New York City. This one's good, all the textures. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to flip through much more. Here's another good example of this image is out of focus. <laughs> uh, it's dimly lit, but it's gorgeous, and she made it work. I don't think that's it. So that's something else that wouldn't have traditionally been viewed as art. Same with this. We're cropping out people's faces. There's blur, but it's interesting. Uh, up next, I want to talk about Pictures from Home by Larry Sultan. This is one of my favorite photo books of all time. It's gorgeous. I referred to this a lot when I was making my own monograph and it's just a really vulnerable personal 
photographic exploration of Larry Sultan's relationship with his family, which is a subject matter I'm always investigating and trying to examine the communities that are closest to us, if you know what I mean. So let's look through this one a little bit. Okay, this is the cover of the gorgeous Tipton image. Larry Sultan is a photographer from California. The book itself is told in chapters, so there's kind of a structure put into place. He includes some written narrative as well. I believe these are all 4x5 medium format images, which is definitely lending to why the color space is so rich and vibrant. There's nothing really you can do to replicate that in a digital sense. The writing in here is really beautiful. It's kind of just providing more context for each of these images. And I mean, this one is so gorgeous. It's his dad in the early morning waking up. I mean, how raw and vulnerable is that? There's also an inclusion of found images from his personal family's archive, which I think is really interesting. Look how beautiful that is. He's a master of light. So this is just a really, ugh, look at the 70s interior of the carpet. He's just like a formal master, like almost the antithesis of Nan Golden. Look at, the, look at this very constructed composition. His parents were deliberately subjects, so these aren't candid. He posed them in a variety of ways. More context into his family history. More found images. More found images. His dad. It's so good. Lastly, I want to talk about Polychromatic by Ozma Harvilotti. I haven't looked through this in a while, but I just pulled it kind of at random. And I think it's a good counterbalance to a photo book that doesn't have a prescribed narrative and is almost plotless the way a book could be. I think Ally Smith people, there's nothing really at first glance here that tells you what this book is about, unlike Pictures from Home, which obviously had a written narrative to support the, the images, and then The Ballad of Sexual Dependency, which is clearly documenting a time and a place. This is a little bit more seemingly random at a glance and kind of photography for photography's sake, in my opinion. I mean, gorgeous. <laughs> this is a gorgeous image to me. Kind of like the banality and materiality of this car. There's a lot of posing with architecture, this like micro-macro duality existing between the images, the act of cropping in and what that does. I love these like quiet contemplative images that aren't seemingly about anything. And I think, you know, when they're in conversation with, another, with one another, even in their form itself, like on this page, it's really beautiful. Like the reds are speaking to each other, obviously. Some portraiture involved. A lot of still lives. We love this one, the frog on the head. So yeah, I thought this would just be an interesting look into something that's seemingly a little bit more plotless and not as apparent. I hope that was fun to watch. I would love to do more content about this and in, in this subject in the future. I'm gonna put some thought into maybe some video idea prompts and if you have anything in specific that you want me to talk through or something in my collection that you want me to reveal, that would be awesome. Um, I think that would be a really fun addition to this channel, you know, in support of reading is looking. Definitely a passion of mine and it might be yours too. Great. Hope this was fun. This angle is not my best. Have a good day.